Hello, and welcome to this short video discussing um, how we can use sacred art. Um, this can apply some to our classrooms, but also mainly to this virtual world we're trying to engage in during this time. My name is Jose Gonzalez, and I am the Senior Director of Professional Development with Sophia Institute for Teachers. I'm sure many of you I have engaged with in person at our in-person workshops, while others may just be coming to us um, now to, to see what we have to offer during this time. I'm just going to take a few moments to kind of guide you through and simulate a few discussions on sacred art, uh, and then just provide you with a few practical trip tips of what you can do with um, with sacred art, um, both in your classrooms, but specifically on a, on a virtual level as you're transitioning many of your classrooms during this time. Additionally, um, some of you uh, may be using our curriculum and are very familiar with how to do this in, on some level. Some of you may just be um, just looking for additional resources to supplement what you're already doing and are not very familiar with our curriculum. And so this is directed at both, at both types of audiences and we hope that you'll find it useful. To begin, um, let's, I wanna show you this image. This is an icon. Uh, it's called Christ, Christ the Great Hero Font. Um, and so uh, there's three different types of um, art reflections I'm going to do. Um, right now, this is we're going to start with a with a standalone, uh, just a one piece by itself. Um, and so this on its own, this piece of art completely on its own. Um, what do you see here? Um, and, and and I pose obviously this is not. Um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of just talking you through this. You would obviously spend a much more ex extended time on this. Um, in, in a virtual medium with your students. But I encourage you, if you're doing a single image, to just put it up there. Give them time to discuss, to think about it. What do they see? For, now, there's might be certain goals behind what you want them to see and what you want to draw attention to, um, and certainly lead them in that direction, but also be open to allow them to discuss and point things out that you may not have thought of because it will surprise you what they do discover. So in this particular image, if, if we look, um, you know, what is, what is Christ wearing? What's he, what are, what are some of the things he's um, holding on to, pointing to? They give us a clue as to what this image is trying to speak to us about who Jesus is. You see, you will notice Jesus is wearing this stole. He is um, holding um, this book of scripture. He is sitting on a throne and he's also wearing a crown, right? So this, this image very much speaks to Christ being priest, prophet, and king, right? He, the, the stole reflects his priesthood, prophet, the scriptures, the word of God, and king, the throne, and the crown, right? And so Jesus was priest, prophet, and king. What does that mean for us? Well, we are called to share in those offices. So what does it mean? How, how are we priests? How are we called to be priests? Even those, those of us who are not ordained uh, to the sacramental priesthood are still called to be priests by virtue of our baptismal calling. So what does it mean to be a priest? To be a priest, how do we do that? We make our lives our, an offering. We make our lives a sacrifice. Everything we do, we offer up as a sacrifice, right? And what a perfect time to be able to do that in this time when we're, there's uncertainty, there's struggles, we don't know what's going on. We take each day and we offer it to the Lord. That is how we are priestly. How are we prophets? We proclaim the word of God, right? We proclaim the truth. As teachers, this is the probably the easiest and most typical way uh, thing you do, the office you live is being a prophet, right? You preach and proclaim the truth. How are you kingly, right? You govern well what has been entrusted to you, right? So your homes, your teaching, your classroom, the way you manage and engage in this online learning during this difficult time, this online teaching, that is how you live live that out, right? Now, the kids may point out a dozen other things before they get to that learning goal. That's okay, right? Um, they're go they're going to draw and other and pick other truths from the, that because that's what art does. That's what beauty does. Is it points us, and and each each person's perspective is going to be unique, but hopefully provide beautiful insights into what the truth of the faith is. Another element I will provide now is I want to look at comparing and contrasting 
two images that are the same event, but different representations of them. So here we have the crucifixion by Van Dyke, right? What do you see here? What's the first adjective that comes to mind? Right, so that's just some questions and, and allow the students to share that. Maybe it's gonna be in a chat bar, maybe ahead of time you'll send it to them and they'll respond um, in, in, in an email format, however that, that may be, right? Here is the crucifixion by Raphael. Same event, totally different depiction. Now what images, now, now what adjectives come to your mind when you see this image, right? Take some time to think about that. Allow them time to think about it. And then we post them side by side, right? So now they have them both side by side. And a great activity here is three differences, three similarities and allow them to come up with those, right? Um, maybe within um, Google Classrooms or whatever medium you're using, if there's ways to allow them to discuss with one another, they can do that or to just write them out themselves. But three differences, three similarities. The learning goal here with this particular one is we're trying to get them to see um, the two natures of Christ, right? Jesus on um, the Van Dyke one is, Jesus is fully, fully man, and the Raphael Jesus is fully God, right? We see the reality and the difficulty of what suffering is from a human perspective. Um, we see the human side of the suffering that Jesus experienced, the agony, the pain. And then we see kind of the other one points to the resurrection, right? We see the glory of suffering can be redemptive, that Jesus is, um, is, is, is fully God, and that he will transform suffering, right? He can take our suffering and transform it into something beautiful. So uh, as we look at this, obviously there's lots of other learning goals too that you can draw from this, right? So this is just one learning goal, but it's not the, with, with this activity in mind that I just show you, but you can draw upon other things, right? So comparing and contrasting two, um, two images of the same event. Now I'd like to talk about comparing and contrasting two images of different events or different things, yet have similar themes. So here, this is The Prodigal Son by Rembrandt, right? Allow the students to kind of sit with this. What do they see? What do they notice? What do they, you know, what jumps out at them, right? They might mention the prodigal son who's missing a shoe. They might mention and see that the father, if you look closely, the two hands are different. The father's hand, one is definitely a, a man's hand, one is more um, a feminine hand, right? If you look closely, the father is completely blind, right? What does that say? What does that do? So you can stimulate lots of discussion here. After you've given them some time with just this one, we move to this one, right? This is the healing of the blind man right, at Jericho. So what do, you, what do you notice in this image? What do you see? Um, what are the things the colors tell you? The faces, the way they're, you know, you notice there's one face that's facing, looking at the crowd, looking away from the healing while everybody else is looking at the healing. Could the, could the person looking away be, be Judas maybe, right? Um, you see the blind man, it's a before and after. You have the blind man who is healed, who is being healed. And then um, to, to the right of that is the healed blind man. He's thrown down his staff. He's looking up, he's praising, right? So um, lots for them to reflect on. But now let's look at both of them side by side. What are some common themes? What are some different things that you notice? What is this pointing to, right? Does this show God being a divine physician? The, 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 you know, pointing to Jesus as the divine healer. Look at how both the Father and Jesus are both bent down toward the person that they're bringing mercy to, right? That God comes down to meet us, right? Notice, uh, notice that uh, both, both, the fa both the Father and Jesus are touching, like are extending a hand toward those they are healing, right? So one might be a one might be um, 
a, a, a spiritual healing, a spiritual embrace while the other is physical, but the two are connected, right? So lots that you can reflect on even back and forth. Like, you, you know, in the, I, I pointed out the, the Judas figure when it was just the healing of the blind man, but look at the, um, the older brother off to the side and the other one looking somewhat in, indignant. So, so there's people kind of rejecting the mercy or jealous of the mercy in both. So, so lots that you can kind of bring in and discuss there. So those are just general ideas. Um, kind of more practical tips of, of what I really want to um, encourage you. Um, you can spend time with just one image, compare and contrast similar images, or spend time finding common themes between two completely different images, as, as I just showed you. Um, you can use sacred art to help guide meditations. I encourage you from a, from a distance, maybe put together, you know, a virtual stations of the cross. And we actually have a resource for that on our, on our website. Um, but, you know, have images of the stations of the cross and have them pray with those virtual rosaries that exist out there using sacred art images to help with a rosary um, you could always read a passage of scripture with them and then find a piece of sacred art that depicts that scripture passage and have them maybe pray on that and think about how's the artist's image compared to something they might have thought about in their minds as they were reading the passage does the artist capture it the way they envisioned it what differences and similarities are in there. So different things that you can do with that. Uh, you can easily, uh, I encourage you, we have a great sacred art library on our site, but there's also Google images is a beautiful thing. Tie that in. Um, don't be afraid of awkward silences at the beginning, especially if you're not used to doing this. If, if you're, I'm sure many of you who, who have done this many times know what it's like that sometimes there's awkward silence and it's okay. You just let it sit, right? Don't, expect it to do some some days this flows perfectly other days it doesn't that doesn't mean it's it's a failure if you're not generating amazing discussion every time right but but it's a place place to start give them time to just gaze 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 upon and sit with the image before you dive into discussion just have them um sit with it to stare at it to focus on it and it's okay if there's silence, right? Um, just let them gaze upon the image. You don't have to be an expert in art to do this. So we're not, you're not approaching this in the same way an art teacher might do an art class in, in an art history or et cetera. It's a little more subjective. Yes, um, you're leading them to certain truths, um, but there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer in what students see and observe, right? What are they seeing? How are they interpreting it? And, and not, don't worry so much what did, on what the artist intended, but more on what is happening and taking place and what do you see, right? Let the Holy Spirit guide the discussion, right? As I mentioned, as, as I was showing you the images a second ago, I was talking about the learning goals and things we, where we wanted them to end up. However, don't, don't make that like lock you into them having to get there, right? If, if it kind of derails a little bit, obviously in a good way, let the Holy Spirit work with that, right? The Holy Spirit can do amazing things in that sort of discussion. Um, this is probably one of the best things you can do virtually with students at this time. This is probably one of the, I, I think this is probably the easiest lesson ideas of things you can do um, with them in religion class from a distance, right? Um, using sacred art can easily be done with every grade, right? Every grade level uses sacred art. And if you use our curriculum, you've seen that, that every grade has sacred art reflections. It's about modifying the questions, modifying the amount of time you spend on it based on attention span. What are, what are ways like remotely that, that you can easily do this, right? Every single, whether you're using our, if you're using our curriculum, you can easily do this. If you're not using our curriculum, there's other creative ways to do this, but it's very easy. You can either find the image and send them, email, email your students the link, email the parents the link or a PDF of it, and, and maybe with some questions for the students to ponder ahead of time, right? So you can either do it right then and there in the middle of your, e of your, of your virtual lesson, or you can email it ahead of time, right? Um, you can let them share out loud. So if, if you're using a medium like Zoom or Google Classroom and they, and you, and they can actually, um, you, can, you can hear them in the audio, you can let them engage that way. 
or there's you know things like Zoom or Google Classroom or whatever that have them use the chat feature to just type in their responses. This is, I mean, that's a great way for kids that are timid and shy and don't want to speak up anyway. They can just type type it in there. Um, I, I think I've, I've been saying this a lot in some of the videos I've been putting out during this time. This is another great way to engage the parents and the family, right? We talk about as religious educators how hard our jobs can be sometimes because our parents aren't on board. How do we engage the parents? One of the good things and positive things, and I know this has been a very stressful time for many of us, but one of the goods that's coming out of this is that we are being given on a silver platter an opportunity to engage the domestic church. So maybe one thing you could have them do is send the picture with the questions, have them discuss it with their parents, with their family, encourage them to do it as, a, as, as part of their family prayer time that evening or, or whatever. And then maybe the next day, pose the question, what were some of the things your parents shared? What were some of the things your siblings shared? How, you know, what came up in your family discussion? Share that with us now too, right? So great things, great ways to engage um, in that mode as well. So I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, I hope that uh, that you're able to, to find this as, a, as an edifying way to engage your students during this time. I really hope um, and pray for each of you uh, during this difficult moment, these during these difficult times. Uh, and if you have any questions at all of how uh, we can help you to better engage your students during this time, please email us at, uh, you can email us at uh, teachers at sophiainstitute.com or you can email myself at jgonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z at sophiainstitute.com. Thank you all so much and God bless.